has come upon men is the absence or the lack of discernment. The absence or the lack of discernment. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, he says, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Watch this. He says, less at any time we let them sleep. Lack of discernment. There are people today, with all due respect, if they had discernment, they would not have jumped into certain vehicles. If they had discernment, they would have known that these people you see are armed robbers. If they had discernment, see, the end time will demand that your sensitivity is acute and strong if you must survive today's days. Because Satan can translate himself as an angel of light. Is someone learning? Lack of discernment. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Watch this. It says, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass the master's creep. But Israel does not know, my people do not consider. Lack of discernment. There are many people today who have gotten in trouble because they lacked discernment. Oh, they could not discern that this is not just malaria. That in one week, everybody began to be sick. That something, this is not just malaria happening. This is the devil trying to bring, raise his ugly head. And that it will take more than a medical attention. There are people who did not discern when the spirit of God was telling them, start fasting. Give yourself to three days fast. And sometimes God will not tell you why. Yours is to obey. It's in the place of obedience that more revelation comes. Discernment. Discernment. Sometimes God can give you a job that may not make sense, but within that job is what connects you to the next level. The absence of discernment. One of the proof of a matured believer is that you have trained your faculty to be able to discern things. Discern things. Lack of discernment. The absence of discernment. Acts chapter 28 verse 27. Acts chapter 28. The Bible says, For the heart of these people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. They are being converted and they are being healed. Depends on the ability to have their eyes opened and their ears opened. Please lay your hands on your head and say in the name of Jesus, the grace for discernment. I receive it right now. Discernment. Discerning opportunities, discerning moments, discerning evil when it is forming, that I will not allow evil form before my eyes and then destroy me, making me a victim of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I obtain grace, grace, the ability to discern. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From scripture, there are only two principal ways to build discernment. Number one, the knowledge of the ways of God as revealed in scripture. And number two, praying in the spirit. These are the two principal ways that the saints build discernment. You don't wish discernment. Number one, the knowledge of the ways of God as revealed in scripture. If you do not know how God works, the devil will act in a way making you believe this is God until it destroys you. The knowledge of the ways of God as revealed in scripture. And then number two, praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit helps the saints to build capacity to discern. Capacity to discern. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second cause of calamities, tragedies, and losses? Are you ready? Carelessness. As simple as this sounds, don't assume you think you know what I'm saying. Just pay attention. Carelessness. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. 
carelessness. Carelessness. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. Let's read together. Ready? One to read, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Hold on. How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation there are many many believers who are careless with their lives careless with everything around their lives they take life they take God they take things for granted whatever would be would be careless with their prayer life careless with their word study life careless with their commitment in the house of God and they magically believe that tragedy will find its way of being exempted from their lives. Listen, your possibilities in this kingdom happen to the degree to which you engage the forces of victory. Being at ease and allowing things to run themselves is like kicking a car and then just firing and allowing it to drive itself. You will most likely end in a ditch. I want to show you a scripture. I think I've shared that scripture here. But it's blessed my life. It became a warning. A warning to my life about the tragedy of carelessness. Are you ready? Judges chapter 11. Let's go to verse 30. Judges 11, 30. 3, 0. Judges chapter 11, 30. This is the story of a man called Jephthah. Jephthah was a great man. He was a warrior. But he was one man who was careless. And let's learn from the effect of his carelessness. Are you ready? And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. Watch this. And said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon unto my hands. Reading to 35. Then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth from the door of my house to meet me. When I return in peace from the children of Ammon. It shall surely be the Lord, and I will offer it as a bond offering. Say carelessness. God did not ask him. God did not say, give me anything. By himself, he tied this chain around his destiny. Carelessness. So Jephthah passed over the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. 33. He smote them from all those regions, 20 cities, all to the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Now, when Jephthah came to Mizpeh unto his house, and behold, guess who was the first person who came to greet her father? His daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. This innocent girl came to celebrate her father from returning back as a warrior. But she did not know that the father had used his carelessness to program her death. Did she hurt him? No. Did she insult him? No. Was she a witch? No. An innocent, well-behaved girl who looked forward to the coming of her father. Perhaps she also prayed her own prayer. Lord, bring my daddy home safely. Not knowing that before daddy left, he used his mouth carelessly. How many parents have programmed evil over the destinies of their children? Just because you love your child does not mean your child will be free. Carelessness can make good people to behave like evil people. Watch this. She came to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her, he did not have a son or daughter. And Jephthah, 35, and it came to pass when he saw her, what happened? He rent his clothes and said, alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Was it her fault? And thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. And I cannot go back. Hmm. Lord, if I arrive Koinonia safely, all my five houses I will give you. I will give you my firstborn, he must serve. I will give you my salary. I will even leave my job. And God says, I did not ask you. I am not an evil God. Carelessness has brought trouble on many people. There are people who vowed vows they had no business vowing. They made careless 
things because statements because of emotions and at the end of it they did not know that all of these things have conditions when you honor them and have conditions when you violate them hallelujah praise the name of the lord many people make all kinds of statements lord in the name of jesus if this one happens, if I don't give my car, kill me, kill my generation, kill the ones they give birth to. And they just believe they have just spoken to the realm of the spirit. It was carelessness that made those who wanted Herod to release Barabbas. You know what they said? They said, let his blood be on our heads and upon our children. You can curse yourself, but why bring your children as part of it? Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? Many believers have put themselves in very troubling and disturbing circumstances today because of carelessness. They have made commitments that have brought financial losses. Out of emotions, they just got up and pledged on behalf of myself and my wife. And the wife is saying, we did not discuss this. I hereby bring five billion for the building of this building. They now give you a placard and snap it and put it on social media and keep texting you every day. We are waiting. Even one billion you've not given. And now your reputation is at stake. Can I tell you the truth? It is wise to not be hasty in speaking or doing. One of the proof that you are matured is to understand the gravity of what you are saying or doing. Everybody say carelessness. Yeah. Carelessness in driving. There are people who drive almost at 100 and whatever, provided the car is moving, they fire even if there is a traffic light in front of them. And then something happens when you have two mad men like that, you will most likely have an accident. Are we together? Carelessness. There are people who take things for granted. They have a problem seen in the night and they want to drive from everywhere to everywhere. You see, before we begin to blame demons, I told you demons are opportunists. There are times that they don't even need to do anything. The carelessness of the saints has already assisted in accomplishing whatever it is that the devil intended to do. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some of you because of carelessness, with all due respect, you see gatherings in the night. And you say, I want to go and find out. You are not a police officer. You are not a law enforcement agent. It's none of your business. Your relatives are not there. Carelessness. And you get up and you do not know that these are people who are already plotting how to go and boggle a home. And just when you arrive there, the police arrive too. They pack all of you. May God deliver you from evil. Say amen. How about people who drive knowing that their tire pressure is bad? They will still drive. Their exhaust is dragging on the ground. They will still drive. Petrol or their gas is leaking from the car. They will still drive. And carry passengers. Have you seen those kinds of things? And some of you entered the car. The man made a vow and said if you give me victory the first thing that comes out of my house only God knows how long he waited to have that one daughter and this young lady comes out with timbrel dancing and saying daddy welcome do you know that he ended up sacrificing her now will you call that man a murderer yes and no because no being that he's a good man but who killed her There are many people who got into trouble willingly. They got up and got into trouble willingly. I'm saying this because there are many calamities in our lives that if only we had discernment and then obtain grace to be free from a life of carelessness, financial carelessness. There are people who are in debt today. They collected a car that they didn't have money to pay borrowed somebody's car and crashed it like the axe head remember all kinds of things carelessness living beyond their means getting into all kinds of trouble and today they are in a situation that has brought calamity and pain upon their lives 
Ladies and gentlemen, believers are taught by the Spirit to become wise people. And part of wisdom is to be able to live your life with discretion, not to get up and get into trouble. Jesus was teaching us to pray and he said, deliver us from evil. That we ask him to deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Number three. Why do people experience tragedies, losses, calamities? Ignorance. Ignorance. Please don't assume you understand this. Ignorance. Ignorance of the laws of the spirit. Ignorance of the laws of destiny. Ignorance. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. People get into trouble because of ignorance. They say things. They do things. The Bible says also that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. And he that hasted with his feet sinneth. That a soul should be without knowledge. It is not good. And that he that hasted. You are in a hurry because of ignorance. You will sin against yourself. Please say ignorance. Many believers do not understand that there are laws. For instance, the law of honor. For instance, the law of diligence. These are laws. For instance, the law of seed time and harvest. Ignorance of these laws does not exempt you for the, from the consequences of not obeying them. The Bible says, he that considers the wind, is that in your Bible? He will not sow, and as a result, he will beg in harvest. Whether you are a sincere person or not, in our world today, if you did not farm or you did not prepare for the days where the rainy season is gone, you will beg. It's in the Bible. So, being ignorant does not exempt you from the consequences of violating those laws. There are many laws that I've taught you here. The law of honor, the laws that control favor, the law of competence, all of these things, they are laws. And if you do not have an understanding of them, ladies and gentlemen, you will program calamity. For instance, a man, I hope you know that prayerlessness is officially authorizing evil to plague your life. Did you know that? That when a believer does not commit himself perpetually to pray, eventually you will put yourself in a position where you become a victim of the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. Prayerlessness. How about wordlessness? Not having access to the word of God. ignorance believers must be dis delivered from the plague of ignorance many people will tell you they do not know and they get into all kinds of trouble why are you like this i do not know you do not know that there are curses and yokes you do not know that you came from a family where nobody has lived be before you know live above 50 years just because you do not know does not stop the curses and the altars from working. It will take your ability, watch this, your ability to get out of ignorance into a point of knowledge and then obtain grace to engage that which establishes your liberty. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, we did not even know Christ went ahead to die for us. Imagine if everyone had to discover by himself and then personally ask for a savior. You see why it is called so great a salvation? Because we did not ask for it. I have watched, and I tell you this with all due respect. I have watched people violate the laws of the spirit perpetually. I have watched people violate the laws of increase, the laws of greatness, the laws of advancement. I have watched people violate these laws perpetually, sometimes to their detriment. The Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7. I have said, verse 6, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. If you do not know that what you are seeing is acid, consecrated acid, and you go and put your hands there thinking it is water or kerosene. Will it pity you and say, okay, I, I, you are exempted. 
I'm acid. Next time, just be careful. As you put your hand there, sometimes you may not live to tell the story. Many people have gotten themselves through ignorance. They have ventured into things they did not understand. Some in ignorance, they just went to the village and got angry and entered a shrine. Removed everything there and said, we're tired of this nonsense. Bulldozer, come and bring this thing out. And while they were saying, they saw women crying and they did not know why. They were already crying. And the person said, God, let the spirits come to me. And then they left. And, and sometimes even believers who do not understand the dynamics of enforcing liberty, they just blindly went and said, don't worry, everything is done in Christ. And then they do, and nobody talks. You go back home, the first thing that disappears is your khaki, your wallet, everything disappears. And then you sleep, and then only part of you wakes up. At the end of it, and the person will be shouting, in Jesus' name, God, you cannot fail me. In Jesus' name, I trusted you, it's ignorance. Hallelujah. Just because you are saying in Jesus' name, and you are calling the right Jesus, does not mean things will just happen. There are rules of engagement. Are you, are you listening now? This is very important. Ignorance. Even physically, there are those who did not choose their battles. They went to go and fight institutions that are bigger than them. They went to go and fight people. Listen to what I'm telling you. Across nations, there are nations that may be weak and just get up to go and fight people greater than them. The nation of Israel, every time they were going to fight a people bigger than them, they will consult with God. Three kings have come together against us. And sometimes Africa, with all due respect, sometimes we don't walk with wisdom, we just get up carelessly. There are individuals who just step in and say, in this office, I'm tired of this manager. I'm a child of God. I'm tired of oppression. And the man is quiet and watching you while you are done. And immediately he's done. He says, secretary, just give him the letter. Okay, we appreciate you. You can leave. He said, no, I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to complain. You can leave. And the person who is complaining like that, you would have calculated that what if I lose the job? While you were arguing and insulting the man who feeds you every day, you forgot you have five children and four relatives. Now they've driven you out. And in two days, your life has become miserable. Ignorance. Are we together? There are certain people you cannot cast out of your life. I've taught you this. They are not castable. You only pray for favor so you pass through their gates. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. How do you cast Pharaoh? Because you want to come out of the prison. You will remain there. Because the Pharaoh is the leader over Egypt. If you want to come out of the prison, you don't pray that God will cast him. You pray that you'll find favor with Pharaoh. Let him send for you to interpret his dream for God's sake so you can get out of that dungeon. Is someone learning? Careless, ignorance. Let me give you number four, my God. This number four is going to be a very strong very strong one for someone misuse and abuse 